when I think I found some data for not Citadel Connect specifically, but the type of system that Citadel Connect is. But we're going to be discussing, and I never thought I'd say these two words together in my entire life, but we're going to be talking about systematic internalizers. <laughs> so what is a systematic internalizer? Well, a systematic internalizer, or an SI as abbreviated in documentation, is an investment firm which, on an organized, frequent, systematic, and substantial basis, deals on own account when executing client orders outside a regular market, an MTF or an OTF, without operating a multilateral system. Now, while that all sounds like a bunch of gibberish to you, I'm going to go ahead and explain that. So an MTF, a mother, just kidding, multilateral trading facility, MTF, is a European term. This is all European related, by the way, for a trading system that facilitates the exchange of a financial instrument between multiple parties. PIA circle jerk action going on. MTFs allow eligible contract participants to gather and transfer a variety of securities, especially instruments that may not have an official market. These facilities are often electronic systems controlled by approved market operators or larger investment banks, of course. Traders usually submit orders electronically where a matching software engine pairs buyers with sellers. Now, an OTF, an organized trading facility, is regulated by the new MIFID, or I say new, it came out in 2018. Um, basically, this MIFID2 set of rules um, for Europe introduced the OTF as a new category of trading venue. So why are we creating more trading venues when the freaking regular exchanges don't get any volume? Isn't that fishy? What is going on here? Anyways, they introduced the OTF as a new category of trading venue. It's a multilateral system in which mul multiple third-party buying and selling interests in bonds, structured finance product, emissions, allowances, or derivatives are able to interact. Again, circle jerk fiesta. Hopping up at the, at the OTF, baby. Uh, so a multilateral trading facility, what the hell is that? Because remember, Citadel Connect doesn't have to use any of these because they're a systematic internalizer. A multilateral trading facility is a type of trading venue where financial instruments are exchanged. Brokers, market makers, banks, hedge funds, and asset managers can connect to MTFs directly becoming members, while retail traders can only access the markets on offer via a provider of their choosing. That doesn't sound messed up. But wait, Citadel Connect does not use an MTF or an OTF or a multilateral trading facility. So what the hell do they use? Well, let's look at why they're controversial first. Stock exchanges thought they were a great deal, or they were getting a great deal with the new MIFID2 rules. Then they read the rules <laughs> on SIs. So this is proof of the pudding, people. The regulators in office, the people in office that claim they know so much, don't even read their own rules because now they're not happy with it. This is as of like, uh, you know, I think mid-2018. So Euronext NV and Deutsche Borg, Deutsche Borg, sorry. Uh, Deutsche, uh, you know what, let's just skip that. Both argue that SIs could siphon trades away from stock exchanges. Now, doesn't that sound like what's happening right now? because the rules give them greater flexibility in how they price orders. Oh, well, well, great. As MIFID also compels fund managers to prove that they are getting the best prices for clients, stock exchanges fear that SIs will offer slightly better prices to win business. Well, yeah, maybe. That's hilarious, though. Uh, yeah, we thought we were getting a good deal, but then we decided to read the rules. It's like, yeah, maybe you should do that, you know, from now on before these uh, rules are implemented. So why were SIs created in the first place? Well, the category came into, uh, into existence under an earlier round of reforms called MIFID, one, but almost no one used them because banks were able to run unregulated dark pools called broker crossing networks to match their customers' order of a stock and other securities. Alarmed by the rise of dark trading, as they should be, where prices are not displayed before a trade takes place, the writers of MIFID 2 banned broker crossing networks and put caps on other forms of dark pools. That's why we made systematic internalizers. So they can get a new home for their customers' trades, which doesn't and is unaffected by the caps. So of course, whenever something gets regulated and they ban instruments of uh, manipulation, of course they're allowed to just go and create another one. That's the problem. Number six, does that mean SIs will fall, will fail since the, uh, you know, the people using them or the regulators see that it is uh, potentially manipulative? Uh, apparently not, because the tick size complaint was always a convenient stick with which to beat the SIs. 
Several firms that registered to become SIs, including Sun Trading LLC, have already said they never want to use the greater pricing flexibility to win business. It will take months before fund managers are comfortable with using SIs, but when they do, they are likely to find that the SIs are able to offer them a better price than other venues. Perfect. Maybe we should make them, I don't know, illegal. Now, number seven, why would that be? For a very simple reason. An SI always knows who it is trading with, while a trader in a stock market like you and I never know who it is trading with. That doesn't sound messed up. A bank or a speed trader doesn't have to have to price defensively as an SI, so it should be able to provide keener prices. That's the theory. Whether it becomes the reality will not be apparent for many months to come. Well, you pretty much called it dead on because it's many, uh, you know, a couple years now after this, uh, this article. Actually, I guess, let me do some math real quick. One, two, nearly four years. So that's crazy. Reality's here, people. Great. So who uses these things? Well, let me guess. Jane Street. Yep. Citadel, of course. The Connect. That's what it is. Citadel Connect. This is where it is. It's in Europe. It's in Ireland. You saw it. It's in the United Kingdom. So when I, what do you do when the when the United States Stock Exchange comes out with a bunch of rules where you can't use a bunch of... Uh, you know, tactics that can manipulate, you just go outside of the US to, the, to Europe and then you take advantage of their rules that aren't in place yet. So as you can see, these people are crooks. They're allowed to be crooks. They're supported to be crooks. And even when they're caught being crooks, they're not punished for it. So basically everyone and their mom is able to use this as far as people who like to, you know, do great things in our stock markets. JP Morgan, Deutsche Bank, UBS Group, Goldman Sachs, all of those are going to be systematic internalizers for equities, fixed income, and derivatives. And it says here, most large banks are expected to use the SI umbrella for at least one asset class. Perfect. Um, and also, Jane Street, by the way, uh, you know, Jane Street, good old Jane Street, uh, they will be um, also trading ETFs via the um, systematic internalizer. So does that sound great, everyone? Um, while we're getting our, all of our rules implemented over here in the U.S., um, there's still loopholes being gashed out and taken advantage of in Europe. Thank God, though, Europe, Europe's largest ETF trader, it's like the BlackRock of Europe, is not going to be using a systematic internalizer. That's good. So uh, MIFID, too. What the hell is this? These are basically the requirements and the main objectives of this uh, include the pursuit of harmonized regulation across EU financial markets, increased competition between EU financial markets, ensuring appropriate level of investor protection. Yet you add the SI and you, you, you have the nerve to bring up investor protection? And strengthening of supervisory, you know what? It just it sounds groovy. Sounds groovy. This is gonna blow your mind. So I found some data for a systematic internalizer. Now I can only imagine Citadel's included in this. So I guess I offhand found some Citadel Connect data indirectly. Get a load of this. So according to Article 4120 of Directive 2014/65/EU, which is MIFID2, investment firms dealing on own account when executing client orders over the counter (OTC). On an organized, frequent, systematic, and substantial basis, are subject to the mandatory systematic internalizer regime. So this is equity data. Um, I plugged in GameStop's uh, ISIN number. Guess what? It showed up. Now this is calculated from October first. Remember on Citadel's website when they stopped calculating? That's because this website picked it up. Now did they give any kind of reference to this website? Absolutely not. But this is where you go to find it. So the last calculation period was from. October 1st, 2020 through March 31st of 2021. November, December, January. Wait, hold on. October, November, December, January, February. Five months, basically. Six months almost. So look at the uh, number of transactions that was done during that time. 1.519 million. Guess how many, uh, you know, total turnover was executed. 4.1 billion shares. Are you shitting me? 4.1 billion in six months? Hold on a second. 58.5 times the shares outstanding of GameStop were traded in six. Oh my. Yep. All right. This is it. This is the once in a lifetime play, people. Hey, look. No price data. Sick.